Hey, it's Hammer Time. Special episode of Hammer Time focused on education. And today we have Emily Ann Gullickson, the CEO of the Arizona Chamber Foundation, the executive director of A for Arizona, and overall education expert. Emily Ann, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Now, I want to first start. You are a Teach for America alum, correct? I am, Phoenix 2008. What I really appreciate about your policy expertise, you were in the classroom. Can you talk a little bit about your time as a teacher yeah. in schools in Arizona? Absolutely. I taught in Central Phoenix in a public district middle school, uh, ancient world civilizations, to about a uh, total of 500 students. Lots of hormones and mood swings, <laughs> but definitely a lot of energy around history, civics, um, and learning all about why we are the way we are. Well, no one gives me any credit, but I was a substitute teacher in, in New York uh, during the MC Hammer area, and you could figure out what happened to the R and Mr. Hammer. Well, by far the hardest <laughs> job I've ever had. <laughs> and, and, and rewarding. Mm -hmm. So now here we are today, yeah. and you're taking those lessons, and we're, and we're mm -hmm. converting these into policy items so that every kid yeah. in Arizona can have access to a great education. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the signature item of yeah. the Foundation A for Arizona results-based funding? Sure, absolutely. So our eyes are all on what's best for students. And uh, we convene Arizona's highest performing district magnet and charter schools, yeah. pick their brains on what they need to sustain their great schools. Uh, and we learned that a bunch of our schools were getting access to dollars for their status as high schools, uh, for literacy, um, for serving English language learners. They were getting federal dollars for being a high poverty school, but they weren't getting a funding source for excellence. These schools are closing the achievement gap. They're putting us on the map nationally for huge academic gains. And so we want to really drive dollars at the schools that are doing it best. Can you just talk about a couple of those examples? Because yeah. I'll tell you, it's inspirational to walk into some of these A for Arizona mm -hmm. schools and just to see what they're, what, what they're doing. It's yeah. transformational work. Absolutely. So one great campus example, Vista College Prep, uh, just south of downtown. Uh, when kindergartners come into Julia Meyerson's school, um, they don't even know how to hold a pencil yet. Um, and by the end of the year, they're writing full sentences. Those are the kinds of schools that we want to double down on um, and have others see as a beacon of hope of what's possible for our highest needs students. Because a lot of times these excellent schools, they, they have waiting lists. I yeah. mean, the parents know that these schools really deliver excellent results and they want their, yeah. their kids in these schools. Yeah, I view wait lists as failed public policy that you have parents and kids who have really figured out this is the school that will meet our students' needs. And um, we need to make sure that more students can be served at the best schools, um, whether it's a district school, magnet school, charter school, including in the rural areas. That's what I wanted to talk mm -hmm. about. This is not a state of Maricopa no, policy. No, absolutely we, not. We do a lot of work at the foundation, at yeah. the chamber on border issues. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, it really strikes me that there's something really incredible going on in a, along our border, uh, particularly in Nogales. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about your thoughts, what's Absolutely. going on there? Absolutely. That is where everyone should go and learn from. Rio Rico, Nogales, San Luis, Gadsden. Um, these communities have made a huge commitment to excellent schools um, and are driving results, um, sending kids to college, and really closing the gap for all kids. The foundation's also did, uh, recently partnered with the Goldwater Institute, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, a, it's a really a blockbuster report yeah. in terms of what's going on with empty spaces mm -hmm. and how we could best utilize that empty space. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the, that report and some of the findings? We found out we have 1.4 million square feet of empty classroom space across the state. Wow. And when you look at the fact that so many thousands of families are wanting access to our best performing schools, um, it comes down to space. And so one of the things that we uh, wanted to double down with is what are alternative avenues where we could utilize that space to best drive taxpayer dollars um, into schools that are serving students and so that we can serve more kids um, and better meet more kids' needs. I know at the foundation, at the chamber, at A for Arizona, we do this for all, all the right reasons, mm -hmm. but, but there is a practical reason as well. Mm -hmm. Businesses need workers so they yeah. need workers with the the right education and, mm -hmm. and the right skills can you talk yeah. a little bit about workforce development and how all this ties into mm -hmm. sort of the that end product being being ready to to work and yeah. earn a living yeah well we've been really excited about seeing some of the models that are growing they're stem based coding academies um, really trying to interact with business needs and make sure that we're producing workforce ready college ready career ready students on the back end 
um, and are being really intentional about design aligned with Arizona's highest demand industries like construction, healthcare, tech, um, so that we're best setting students up for success. And I know that some of the leaders, uh, some of the great leaders like uh, Dr. Chad Geston mm -hmm. of Phoenix Union, uh, they, they've really uh, developed very innovative mm -hmm. models yeah. to educate kids. Absolutely. Top-notch programs um, from bioscience high school um, to the new Phoenix Coding Academy, really being yeah. intentional about recognizing that all students um, do not thrive in the same exact model. And so how can we really hone their craft to set them up uh, for a, a living wage? Um, and opening doors um, where they can really thrive in the future and stay in Arizona. What, what's also important to note is with these schools, mm -hmm. these, these low-income schools, the, the secret sauce, there was just mm -hmm. a great story about uh, a number of schools or, or a big school that LeBron James funds mm -hmm. in, in Ohio. And it did not shock me mm -hmm. that a couple of the secrets to the success mm -hmm. of that school, yeah. longer hours, mm -hmm. uh, extended year. Absolutely. More hard work. Well, and belief that all ch children can really learn at this exceptional level. Order. University High School in Tucson Unified, perfect example. 100% of kids enrolled in advanced classes, and they're getting huge results. Um, highest college going yeah. rates and success rates once they're there. That is a model that more people need to learn from. And I look mm -hmm. at schools like AS College Prep, mm -hmm. ASU College Prep, you know, yeah. connected, connected to the university yeah. where all these kids are graduating. They're all going on to something else. And yeah. we talk about as a state goal, Absolutely. achieve 60 Arizona. Yeah. Uh, we need these kids uh, graduating and ready for the next. Uh, yeah, and building those seamless pipelines. I think one of the other priority policies that we've been able to support that fits uh, greatly with the chamber is being able to drive again at results, but on that high school level. So early college credit bonuses, where we want to benefit teachers who have put in all the extra hard time, talent, and resources um, into helping kids earn high, uh, college credits in high school. Um, so not only do they take on less debt later on with college tuition, but that they're able to see what's possible, that they're already able to achieve at that high level and make sure that we really are able to hit that 60% attainment goal. Well, I look at college, the college bonus program. I look mm -hmm. at our support for uh, career and technical education. Yeah. The faster you get these students into things that connect to what's next, yeah. whether it's on the university side or on mm -hmm. the skill side, yeah. the better chance that we're going to have that they're going to graduate high school and that they're going to earn a, a good living. Completely agree. So we've tried to expand that early college credit bonus program this year uh, and really looking at how can we also double down on high demand industry certifications and credentials um, and driving results um, so that we can help students be set up for success in the fields we need it most in Arizona and keep them here? Well, I, I feel that we have a lot of momentum mm -hmm. in the state. Yeah. Dr. Ladner has uncovered the last 10 years the state has improved basically more than other, any other mm -hmm. state in terms of our education performance. Absolutely. And I believe all these policies where we're uh, incentivizing students to go to these mm -hmm. areas where they will do well yeah. career-wise or they will do well academically yeah. is helping us Absolutely. go up the, the well and that's one of the things we're most excited about the governor's proposal to expand the results-based funding this year to high poverty B schools how do we double down that those are on the way to a to yeah. incentivize that behavior change to realize it's possible for their schools and communities as well well, if you take a look at Governor Ducey's tenure, over mm -hmm. the last five years, there is no governor in the United States of America who's mm -hmm. done more to put resources into the classroom mm -hmm. and to prioritize what's working. Yeah. And, and you look at results-based funding, uh, to me, that's the most exciting reform mm -hmm. in the United States of America. Well, I would agree, but I'm probably biased. You're not, you're not. <laughs> but uh, we definitely are excited. It's leading to greater teacher attention. Uh, more students are being served. Uh, schools are able to help mentor and be a model example for others to learn from. And we're only two years in, so what's possible a few years from now is really exciting. Well, we know that kids are migrating into these higher performing schools, these A for Arizona schools, mm -hmm. and uh, we look forward, Emily Ann Gullickson, yeah. to continue <laughs> at the chamber to work yeah. with the foundation and A for Arizona to drive these excellent results that are propelling our schools and giving our kids uh, the opportunities they need and deserve to compete in the 21st century. Yeah, I can't wait to see what's next.